Welcome to the Daily Decorista. With your host, Anne Capua. Hi and welcome. I'm Anne. I like to make art out of the everyday and share the joy that I'm finding along the journey. In this video, I'm sharing four really great Dollar Tree DIYs that are just perfect for Valentine or spring decorating. But really, these techniques could be used anytime. For our first project, you'll need some flowers that they sell at Dollar Tree. I like the white ones the best for this. This is probably my favorite part. I am channeling my inner Morticia Adams and I am cutting the roses off the stem. I can't stop singing this one. Da na na na. <laughs> da na na na. Hey, it's all about okay. the joy. All about the joy in this journey. So, so after I cut off all the roses from the stems, I get some plaster of Paris. In working with plaster of Paris, it usually says two parts plaster of Paris to one part water, but for my recipe that I'm using right here, I need it to be a little more liquid consistency. So I'm doing one cup of plaster of Paris and I'm adding in two thirds of a cup of water. I just need to make sure that I mix it and it has a nice liquidity consistency. You have to work pretty quickly and mix it up because this stuff sets quick. So then you just take your flowers and you dip them into the mixture and then you kind of smoosh it around and get the liquid in between all of the petals. And I use the help of a paintbrush to kind of get in all the little nooks and crannies if it didn't get in when you submerged it into the mixture. You have to work a little quickly because like I said, this stuff sets fast, but you'll just see that I could get in there for a couple of seconds and just brush the rest of the petals. And you can see here that I could use my fingers to kind of manipulate the petals and play around with them and get them to go the way I would like them. I coax them a little bit with my fingers. I think it's great that these flowers are a little looser than other ones I've worked with, like from Hobby Lobby or from Michaels. These you could kind of make it look any way you'd like. And when they dry, they dry very differently from the way they look when they're wet. I think it's really cool how these flowers take on a total transformation. They kind of remind me a little bit of porcelain flowers or the Italian Capo di Monte. I just get a kick out of it. You'll see some flowers you'll need to go in with the paintbrush a little bit more than others, but it's fine as long as you work quickly. Just be careful not to overhandle them because if you handle them, once they start to set, they will get a little bit sloppy and clumpy looking and you want to avoid that. So you'll see as you start playing with them how much time you have. I'm using a foam sheet to dry my flowers on. I will say my, my advice would be use a cookie rack to dry them on, one that you don't use for food. I didn't have one of those. I just had a foam sheet. So it's non-stick, so it works as well. Just be careful not to put them too close together because if they touch, they'll dry and stick together and you want to avoid that. The next part of our project, we're going to use those really great styrofoam hearts that they sell at Dollar Tree. These um, I painted with an antique white uh, craft paint and you'll just see me take an X-Acto knife. I kind of just cut a little hole to get uh, it started where I could put the dowel in to hold up the topiary. These I got at Hobby Lobby for a whole pack. They're really great and sturdy and I recommend these. Just take a minute, look at the way the flowers turned out, observe their organic shapes, play around with them for a couple of minutes, see which way you'd like to place them, see how they work together. Uh, once you do that, then you can commit to gluing them down. Find the part of the flower that will make contact with the heart. They don't always all 
lie flat so you want to find the pedal or the base that will actually be gluable down onto the heart and once you do you use a generous amount of hot glue they can hold the hot glue find the place where you would like to put them and hold them for a couple of seconds you don't have to hold them that long because the styrofoam kind of just sucks in that glue and uh, it's really pretty easy um, you'll also see that here I see that one of the petals uh, could move down a little bit and that would be something good to hold this flower down so you just see me add in some extra hot glue to the petal Some of the petals will be movable some of the petals will not they'll be stiff you need to use a very light hand um, each flower will be different because if you push too much they'll crack so you want to avoid that so just be gentle it's always good to make a few extra flowers in case you do wind up cracking a couple of them and you could always use them later for different projects here's another look at about how much hot glue you should use to hold down your flower Just like putting together a puzzle, really, you just look and see which shapes fit nicely next to where. Sometimes you might have to hold up the heart a little bit and look at it um, vertical because they look a little different that way, but you'll get the hang of it. I put a lot of glue and it started to drip down, but no worries. I just took um, my X-Acto knife and you can kind of just scrape it before it sets and you just scrape it right off. It's, it's really no big deal. The hot glue dries you can paint right on top of it and it'll all blend in you won't notice it i like to cut a few petals extra and dip them into the mixture this way you can kind of use them to fill in any open spaces and make everything look like it's nice and cohesive those galvanized tin pails from Dollar Tree and I put in um I suggest a few rocks I didn't have rocks I put seashells but you can use the oasis that they have at Dollar Tree and then pick up some of those rounds that kind of flatten up the top you just stick your dowel in add a little hot glue off the base of our topiary i just take one bag of that craft spanish moss that they sell at dollar tree and one bag is enough for both of the topiaries and i have to apologize my camera wasn't rolling and i didn't get this but i took my sandpaper and i kind of distressed the galvanized pail it's very shiny and i wanted a more weathered rustic shabby chic look so that's what i did giving you a few tip takeaways for each project at the end of each project, and you could just screenshot them if you'd like. And what do you think? Here are our finished topiaries. I really had so much fun making these. Next project is super quick and easy because I had leftover um, dipped flowers from the other project. So I took one of those little trinket boxes that they have at Dollar Tree. Being it's Valentine's season, I chose one of the heart-shaped ones. I gave it um, a coat of the antique white paint that I used on my topiary. I'd like them to match. And I just took one of the flowers and I hot glued it to the top and made a very elegant trinket box. These flowers are absolutely paintable. If you'd like, I just happen to like the look of the Plaster of Paris. For our third project, I use some of those flat, heavy wooden hearts that they have at Dollar Tree. These are perfect to use for coasters. I call them coasters. I just give them a coat of the white chalk paint to start them off. They're also very rough around the edges, so I will use some sandpaper and kind of sand them down a little bit. Once the chalk paint is dry, you can choose a napkin or any kind of tissue that you want to use to decoupage on top. These I found on Etsy as a printable. And a little tip, I take rice paper that is blank and I put that in my printer whenever I choose a printable from online and I want to print it out. It makes using the Mod Podge decoupage process a lot easier. It's a beautiful paper. You can find that on Amazon or online uh, as well. So you just see me cut out out these beautiful French shapes 
This is the Etsy shop that I got these from here, in case you want. I was able to get four designs for $2.48, and then you could use this again for different projects. So it's totally worth it. I'm just going around to see how the design fits on the heart. I snip off any excess or anything I don't like, and then I'm able to add my first layer of Mod Podge. So to start, I use a thinner layer for the first layer of the Mod Podge before I put the rice paper down. And the rice paper is great because it really doesn't bubble, I don't think anyway, as much as other papers. So I put it down and I just go around and I make sure all the little edges are glued down. Once I do that, I am able to add the second layer of Mod Podge. But when I add the second layer, I'm gonna go in a little bit heavier because I'm gonna use sandpaper after that to give it that shabby chic style and I am going to distress it with the sandpaper but I have to say when you distress something you kind of de-stress distress de-stress <laughs> and I have a great time with the sandpaper but um, you can see and then you just alternate putting in a little bit of the white craft paint and then distress it more until you're happy with the way you want it to have that old vintage shabby look so you can just see how I go back and forth and I play with it I add that second layer and then once it's dry and I use the sandpaper to distress a little bit, I kind of take the white craft paint and I want to blur the edge of any um, of the edges of the actual rice paper. I just kind of go in with a very, very light dry brush and I kind of go in on top of the image to kind of bring it in so you don't really see it. It kind of blurs the lines. And then here I go. I go back and forth with the sandpaper again, distressing, de-stressing, distressing. <laughs> Besides dry brushing with a paintbrush, a really good tool to use, and I've said it before in my other video, is the back of a makeup sponge. Use the makeup sponge uh, to go in there and you could kind of rub the acrylic paint across the image and kind of blend it in. Now that you've distressed it, it makes it a little bit porous again, and then the white paint will kind of blend in there and you blur all the lines between the paper and the actual wood. And that's how you get that really worn down, weathered, shabby look. Like you can add a very thin layer on, of Mod Podge on top. I am just in love with this contact paper that I got at the Dollar Tree, this beautiful black and white wall design. This paper is just too pretty to use as a liner in a shelf. I love it. So I took one of those unfinished wood hearts that they're selling now at Dollar Tree. And this is great. I give it a coat of chalk paint. You don't need any glue or decoupage for this project. I grabbed some Waverly white chalk paint that matches exactly to the white that's in this paper. You almost can't see the difference. So what I'm doing here is you'll see me, I'm not going to just take this, cut out a heart shape and stick it down. I like the pattern, but it doesn't work with the size of the heart. It doesn't make sense. So what I do is I choose the pieces of the pattern that I am in love with. And then I kind of build a new pattern from what they have. You see me here, I love, we'll start with this cluster of hearts and it kind of has these great vines that take your eye down to the center, to the bottom of the heart. And that's really important in design. You really would like the eye to travel, create some movement in there. You also want to create a little bit of balance and symmetry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out another cluster of hearts to put down on the other side and I'm going to kind of match up all the little vines and create a really nice pattern. You'll see me just playing around a little bit. Um, I could just tap it down, but you don't stick it fully down yet because you could still want to move it. And I'll just cut and stuff like that. I could use things like my fingers to kind of like make the indentation of the heart, or I'm going to use a tool, which you'll see I have like an awl or a sharp tool. And I just go around and I use that to score off the side.
This heart was pretty thin and from the weight of the chalk paint, I felt it was starting to buckle a little. So I added a second one and I hot glued it to the back of this one. And in between the two hearts, I took some of these tassels that I had and I put them on the bottom just to make them a little more fancy. And then here you'll see me, I'm taking black chalk paint and I am dry brushing uh, a little black border around. I want to take my sandpaper and distress it again, give it a nice weathered look. You can use a ribbon or a trim or something here if you'd like, but that looked like a little too perfect for me and I wanted to go with more of the worn out, time-worn feel. So I'm just playing back and forth with a dry brush with black chalk paint and paper, sandpaper until it's smooth and rough around the edges. Can you tell from this project that this week I needed a lot of de-stressing? <laughs> Anyone else? All right, so then I take a little bit more of the Waverly chalk paint. And what you see me do here is I am going to go in and I'm just going to blur the little bit of the edges of the contact paper where there's a little space left in the middle. You barely notice it, but if you give it just a tiny, tiny bit of that white chalk paint in between, you blur the lines, and then you could just take a little cloth and dab off the excess. My opinion, totally worth it to bring some balance into this heart. Just as I did this project, I brought a little balance into my heart. And this project is done. Last look at our four shabby chic country French farmhouse style DIYs from Dollar Tree. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope there were a few things that you could take away and there was a lot of value in it for you. And if there was, please let me know in the comments. I'd really love to read your feedback. And if you like this video and you're new here, please like and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell to be notified of when I post some new videos. I'm brand new here to YouTube, so it just helps my channel get noticed a little bit and hit the algorithm. Go make some magic for yourself. Make a little art out of the everyday. There's just so much joy you can find along the journey. Thank you so much for watching. Happy creating. Bye for now. Thank you for watching The Daily Decorista. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe and click the bell for notifications on new videos.